morning everyone uh, we'll be continuing the classes on epidemiological study designs we have so far completed the designs and descriptive epidemiology in detail so today i'll be explaining about analytical epidemiology so we have covered the hypothesis so in descriptive epidemiology we have made a hypothesis so to test the hypothesis or to know whether it is true or false or to reject or accept hypothesis we conduct analytical epidemiology so let's uh, go into detail about the analytical study design so in analytical epidemiology we will go to um, the steps or the types uh, before the steps uh, we have two types of uh, analytical epidemiological studies. Study designs. Uh, as I mentioned, the study designs are case control study and cohort study. And when these studies were uh, used, are also depending upon the nature of the study. Okay. So this is basically a second major type. The first one was descriptive, and the second major type of epidemiology which actually focus on individual within the population but whereas the descriptive epidemiology we are focusing on a group of people or a population okay so population descriptives we were collecting now we are going to check the individual perspective and the most important thing is testing the hypothesis rather than formulating so in descriptive study we were checking the hypothesis now we were uh, formulating the hypothesis but in analytical study actually we are testing the hypothesis and rejecting or accepting it okay so the first one is case control study it is also known as retrospective study because it is going backwards because the cases and controls are already present at the beginning of the study so the collection of data by asking questions or questionnaires or their previous data their hospital records so it is a retrospective study but it is also known as strohawk study you can see it as the reverse of cohort c o h o r t so it is going backward so cohort is always a prospective study so opposite of cohort is strohawk so case control studies also known as strohawk study so question might come it as strohawk study so never get confused with cohort study strohawk means case control study so the basic thing in case control studies both exposure and outcome have already occurred before the start of disease so before that you need to understand what is exposure what is outcome what is effect and what is cause so the exposure and cause are same outcome and effect are same suppose we'll take an another example of a uh, few people or a group of people who are eating food from street side and who are eating from home <laughs> and the chances of food poisoning so our exposure is eating food <coughs> from the street side because it has more chance to cause food poison so the exposure or the cause is always eating street food and outcome or the effect is food poison okay so always an exposure will have an outcome and it is the same as cause and effect effect and outcome are the disease Okay, the exposure and cause are the reason for it. So exposure is the particular reason for creating that outcome or a particular disease. So here eating street food okay, is the cause. So in analytical study, the fundamental thing is we always keep a comparison group unlike a descriptive study. In descriptive study, we don't have any comparison group because we are just describing it. We are formulating a hypothesis so here we have a comparison group that is control study so the basic thing in case control study both the exposure and outcome have already occurred before the start of the disease if you are going to 
uh, check the uh, food poison of patients in a city or in a town in a village the exposure and the outcome the people who have already consumed uh, street food are there and many of them might have already developed the disease so the exposure and outcome have already occurred and the study is always going from disease to cause because we are trying to find out whether actually eating street food caused food poison so that is food poison to its causes we don't know whether uh, it is just an hypothesis eating food from street side caused food poison so we want to know whether it is actually true or false so we will be asking questions to the patients that is people who have food poison whether they had consumed more food from street side or they eaten from uh, home and we will compare it or do analysis and we will find out whether the hypothesis is true or false so it is going from the effect to cause but whereas in cohort it will be opposite that will uh, be dealing later so this is a basic design of a case control study okay so there will be cases and controls are already present cases means people with the disease control means people without the disease how we select control uh, will be coming in next slides so to cases and controls the epidemiologist will ask questions and find out how many of them were exposed to our particular cause that is street food case is food poison so people with food poison will be checking collecting data using questionnaire or any method and find out how many were exposed to street food and how many were not exposed to street food at the same time controls without the disease also will be collecting data that how many were uh, exposed to the street food or how many had eaten street food and home food so always we need to have a control group so our assumption is people who have eaten street food will have more chance to get the disease that is food poison than the people who have eaten less from the street side that is we are keeping the controls for comparison so cases uh, and controls are without disease to the both groups will be asking questions whether they have exposure or they are not exposed because exposure is tobacco chewing whether they chew tobacco or not chew tobacco so our assumption is in cases the exposure factor will be more compared to controls so that is our assumption that is what we are trying to prove in the cases the exposure will be more compared to control so that is why we are keeping a control group because in control group without people without the disease will not be having uh, much exposure compared to the cases people who have the cause will be having more effect people there is uh, no effect means the cause will be less or less cause less effect or less exposure less outcome so the basic steps in a case control study the first step is selection of cases and control then we have to match it then we have to measure the exposure finally analysis and interpretation so how to select cases and how to select controls okay selection based on the diagnostic or eligibility criteria we have to keep a diagnostic uh, criteria and we have to keep an eligibility criteria and we can take from hospital or general population whereas the selection of control control should be from hospital if the cases are from hospital <coughs> and you can take controls uh, the relatives of the cases or from the general population and the number of controls that is usually the optimal range is one is to one the ideal ideal is one is to one not optimal ideal is one is to one if you're taking one case you should have minimum one control and if there is more control the study will be good and you can have as many as four maximum of four beyond four it is not much effective so at least you need to have one control for every case and while selecting this control 
you need to follow a step called matching that is every control should be matched based on the age and gender suppose if you are taking a patient with cancer that is a male patient with 40 age you need to select a control with the same age and same gender but without the disease so that is what is known as matching you have to match age and gender so control will be <coughs> matched based on age and gender so the third step is measurement of exposure so how do you measure the exposure because you have already uh, produced cases and controls okay now you need to ask about their exposure history so in this case that is if we see the case of oral cancer the exposure is smoking or tobacco chewing so we have cases and control groups so we'll be asking the same questions to cases and controls the exposure factor how many times you chewed how duration you were using this what were the symptoms same questions will be asked to cases and controls so you can use interviews questionnaires uh, past records such as hospital records employment records you can take clinical or lab examinations and you need to take the records that is why it's known as a retrospective study because we are going backward so we are asking the past history of cases and controls so most commonly this is the easiest analytical study because only you need to check the past history past medical history and the past exposure history of a person but one thing is you need to ask the same questions to cases and controls but the main problem is the investigator should not be knowing the cases and control groups identity if he knows the cases are uh, cases the people are cases if people are cases what happens is he might have had a chance to ask more questions and report more uh, more actively than the control group because control group will not have so much answers because only cases will be having more detailed report of their past history because they are having the disease controls is not having the disease so when you ask the same questions uh, how long you were be how long uh, you were using the tobacco means they will not say i have not used so the same questions if we ask the investigator shouldn't be knowing the participants are belong to which group this process is known as blinding and the case control study it is very uh, difficult to do the blinding and there will be bias so blinding and bias will be checking in future classes okay so the last step is analysis so how do you analyze the exposure in groups okay so what we are checking here is exposure so how much exposure did the cases and controls had so the measure of exposure is done by a method known as odds ratio in case control study okay so suppose uh, the same example of food poison the contaminated food or the street food okay that is exposure or the cause of disease and outcome or effect is food poison this is our hypothesis contaminated street food uh, causes uh, food poison so we select cases that is uh, food poison patients and we select uh, relatives neighbors friends of these people we have more number of controls that is uh, 35 cases and 82 we can have one is to four ratio that is 35 to 120 up to 140 uh, controls we can have but this is a scenario we have 82 patients so out of 35 cases 33 patients were exposed to that is 33 patients were uh, taken food from street okay in control 82 controls 52 people 52 55 people were taken food from street but you have to see that the number is more okay you have to check the exposure rate <laughs> In cases, out just two people are non-exposed, that is not taken food from street, but in uh, control, 27 people are taken. So if you see the ratio, in cases, the exposure rate is 94% and control rate is 67%. Because 
the exposure rate in among cases that is vertically I have to see exposed people 33 divided by the cases that is a by a plus c 33 by 35 this is 55 by uh, 82 so you will get 94.2 and 67 so the exposure rate among cases is 94 and exposure rate among control is 67 that is what we are trying to prove the exposure rate would be very high among cases compared to control because people who are exposed will be having high chances of a outcome because people who ate food from street side will have more chances of having food poison compared to people who have not eaten from street so uh, don't get confused after seeing this number because here it is uh, almost mm, triple amount of controls we are taking so only thing we need to check the exposure rate so <coughs> sorry so in control the exposure rate is uh, 55 so horizontal line is exposure rate okay this is exposure this is non exposed this is cases and this is controls don't get confused and always see x axis we write cases and controls y axis we write exposure and non exposure okay so this is 55 by b plus t b by b plus t that is 55 by 82 you get 67 so exposure rate is always high in cases okay compared to controls so odds ratio it is very simple we are trying to find out the odds of exposure among cases and controls odds means chances so what are the chances of exposure among cases uh, and odds so odds of exposure among controls the formula is very simple you have to do the cross product uh, that is a by c divided by b by d so it will become mathematically ad by bc that is ad by bc you have to take the cross product so ad by bc is the odds ratio it gives the odds of exposure to the cases and controls we will be asking about their previous exposure odds so this is the strength of association between the risk factor and outcome risk factor is eating street food than the home food outcome is food poison so it gives a measure of strength of association so when we multiply it 33 into 27 by 55 into 2 you get 8.1 so that is the measure of strength of association of eating street food and the food poison that is exposure and outcome association so in simple words we can say that street food eaters had a risk of developing food poison 8.1 times than that of restaurant or home eaters so people who had eat who had uh, eaten food from street side will have eight times chance of getting the disease compared to the non-exposure group here i put restaurant eaters uh, don't get confused restaurant or anywhere or home side because we have only one exposure and one outcome in any study okay so our uh, exposure factor will be based on the hypothesis so our hypothesis was like for this case eating street food could be the cause of having food poison so street food eating will have an 8.1 times of risk in developing food poison compared to the non-exposed group so here also i put some different uh, this is some hotel name sagar and malabar so don't get confused with the names only you worry about exposed and non-exposed okay so that is all about case control study okay so in cohort study the thing is everything changes because cohort study is a forward looking study or a prospective study so you remember the word trohawk cohort is forward looking study so the backward looking study is case control or it is also known as trohawk study it is prospective study or longitudinal study with follow-up we had seen in the designs or you can say incidents and uh, incidents prevalence will be coming later so cohort what is a cohort cohort is nothing but a group of people who have a common characteristics okay so the thing is it is proceeds from cause to effect okay the cause comes first if it is in case of our food poisoning we will be observing people who are eating from street side and we will wait for the effect because at the beginning of the study all the people 
are without the disease that is the most striking part of cohort study but in case control study both the exposure and outcome have already occurred but in cohort study not the exposure not the effect has already occurred so we will wait for the exposure and the effect to happen in future time so that is why it is known as prospective longitudinal or forward looking study so you can see that study starts present today it starts not yesterday today it starts so in case of retrospective or case control study we will be asking their past history okay what happened in previous time but this is forward looking study so if study starts today now the population is free of disease today nobody is having disease okay so what we do is we observe this group of people so what happens is we observe group of people that is we observe a group of college students and the factor that is causal factor they develop in future time okay so many of the students will be eating from street side and many are not eating from street side they are eating mess food okay so that group a common group we will take some maybe 100 students we will take so 100 many will be going street side for eating food and many will not be going street side for uh, uh, eating food and we will keep on observing them so at the beginning of study they are not even having factors that is exposure factor over the period they will be uh, becoming two groups that is one is exposed group and this is non exposed group the same scenario in case control study what is happening reverse because in uh, case control study it started from disease and no disease exposed and non exposed <coughs> in cohort study it is going opposite that is study without disease few will develop the exposure group will go into exposure and few will go into non exposure group and people who eating food from street develop food poison few may not develop food poison people who eating from mess that is without exposure factor few might develop uh, food poison few might not develop food poison but our exposure or hypothesis is to test the uh, cause and effect that is eating street food will cause food poison so in the last year uh, there was a history of food poison uh, during the month of uh, april may so this year we are planning to conduct a study on a group of people or a hostel group so that will become a prospective or a cohort study last month there was a history of food poison for hostel people or a group of students so we were uh, conducting a study on the people and we, uh, we were like asking questions that becomes case control study so same group we can do different approach but uh, in cohort study uh, the study uh, will go to the future it is a forward looking or prospective study at the beginning of the study there will not be any cases so it is time consuming and it is uh, very uh, difficult to follow up because we need to uh, follow up the students follow up the participants okay so this is how it is um, design case control and cohort study so there are three types of cohort study one is prospective cohort study retrospective prospective retrospective and combination so i can give you an example so this is prospective study so today we are starting the study so there is no a group of people without any disease few are exposed few are in non-exposed group and some of will develop disease some of may not develop disease same in with the non-exposure group outcome has not yet occurred at the investigation begins okay so this is a very clear uh, uh, cohort study very uh, particular or very proper cohort study so retrospective so you can see that uh, if we started in 2008 don't confuse uh, don't get confused with this study if we starting the study at 2008 the population without um, any disease 
over a 10 period of time all were a uh, group of people without any smoking habit over a 10 period of time uh, they develop the habit that is exposure group that is few are uh, started smoking habit and few are not developing smoking habit okay the same group of people we are following for 20 years so this is a prospective cohort study or also known as concurrent cohort study so in 2028 the people with exposure that is people with smoking habit few develop disease and some did not develop disease that is lung cancer and also a non exposure group few develop disease and few did not develop disease so you might have that doubt that how come the non exposure group the lung cancer will develop that is what our aim is we have to find out an association between this exposure this smoking habit and lung cancer so obviously we are postulating we are hypothesizing that the exposure group will have more number of cases and non exposure group will have very less number of cases and obviously it is a multifactorial disease we don't know which factor causing lung cancer our assumption is that smoking causes lung cancer so people with smoking habit will have high chance of lung cancer that is what uh, we are trying to prove in hypothesis because we, uh, there are 100 people uh, with smoking habit they all will not develop lung cancer and 100 people without uh, smoking habit some of them might develop lung cancer but when we compare the smoking and non-smoking the lung cancer development will be very high in smoking group that is exposure will have a big impact in creating the disease and that is what our hypothesis was so we are trying to prove the hypothesis okay i hope that uh, concept is clear so this is a different thing that is retrospective cohort study okay so what happens in the retrospective cohort study don't get confused with retrospective uh, study that is a case control study here the study was started in 1998 okay the study we are starting in 1998 and it ended in 2008 okay so here we started the study at 2008 and it ended 2028 okay we starting at 2008 don't think of the present 2020 you are starting in 2008 it goes 2018 and it lasted in 2028 but whereas in this scenario the study started in 1998 and it lasted only 10 years and in 2008 it stopped what happens was when we start the study we have already two groups of exposure and non-exposure that is not was, that is not present in the prospective odd study okay but the similarity is in 1998 the group which developed in exposure and non exposure group the same group will be traced back till uh, 1988 because the same group of people uh, will be assessed and the same group of data will be assessed from their records from their hospital records school records or habit records so why we are doing a retrospective cohort studies say suppose we are doing a prospective study we need to it might take 20 years to complete if we start in 2008 it will take 20 years but in retrospective course study when we starting the study we are already uh, completed a 10 years gap because people already are in exposure and non-exposure group so we take the exposure and non-exposure group and we'll ask the data or we'll collect the data and we'll follow the same cohort backward so we'll collect the data and we'll make sure that all belongs to a single population <coughs> suppose we are taking a college students uh, now they are 25 years or they are working we'll ask their college history and make sure that all belong to 1988 category or we'll uh, go back 10 years back and we'll collect data and make sure that all belong to same age group or same college okay it should have a same uh, cohort design because cohort means they should have a common characteristics if you're taking a college student group means the same group should be followed back 10 years back and we should collect data so the advantage is we are uh, 
advanced 10 years that is 10 year gap we have reduced so this study will take only 10 years to complete so we start at the study in 1998 and will take 10 years to develop the disease in 2008 they develop the disease and we'll check the exposure rate this is a little bit complicated when comparing but in retrospective study we are collecting the population data from the records from their college records or from the student records but in prospective cohort study we are starting the study with the population and waiting for them to develop into exposure and non-exposure group okay but here we starting the study with exposure and non-exposure group and we are collecting the population data from the records so we are saving 10 years and there will be so uh, in retrospective cohort study or historical cohort or non-concurrent prospective study it is like we are collecting data from the history okay so if the study is like this that is we are going from here to here to learn as retrospective study and if we conduct the study in combined fashion that is historical cohort present scenario and the future follow-up it will be known as combination of retrospective and prospective study so basic elements are uh, similarly case control study we have to select the study subjects we have to obtaining data on exposure so we were checking uh, odds of exposure here we will get exact data on exposure because since we are going forward or it is a prospective study then we have to make a comparison group then we have to do follow-up and analysis so first thing you have to um, compare uh, we have to select the population uh, depending upon the hypothesis that we can keep the general population or special population and we have to uh, get the data second step we have to get the data from records medical examination uh, that will be uh, on a follow-up manner not from their past records we have to um, do a past records when it is a retrospective cohort study that is a combination the same cohort will be checked for its records the difference from case control study is when we are checking uh, a retrospective cohort they are not developed into a actual case they are just developed into exposure and non-exposure group but in case control study actually we are checking the exposure of cases and controls but here we have exposed and non-exposed group when we are doing a retrospective cohort study not the cases then you have to uh, select a comparison group we can take a internal comparison or external comparison group uh, or with uh, general population you can take any comparison group so it will automatically form a comparison group when we follow a population for a period of time some will develop the habit some will not develop the habit so people will not develop the habit will become automatically a comparison group that is uh, cohort within the same group sometimes it will not be available so we have to go for an external comparison then you have to do the follow-up that is the main problem of cohort study when you are doing follow-up the same population will not be there some might have already uh, left out of the city some might have gone for some other purpose so there will be always attrition problem attrition in research says that loss of people during a period of time so there will always uh, attrition problem in cohort study because maintaining the same sample over a period of 10 years and 20 years is very difficult so it is very complicated study basically uh, conducting a prospective cohort study it is very difficult it is administratively very complicated it is expensive time consuming but it is very good study because we will get the exact data we need not to rely on the past history or the data uh, of uh, patients we can relay directly we can see the uh, patients uh, outcome in front of our eyes because we are following up we can uh, check it uh, and we can uh, count the actual risk rather than the odds ratio odds ratio is indirect way of checking the risk 
So it is periodic medical checkup and hospital records, routine surveillance and questionnaires. Uh, in many ways, we can obtain the data. So the obtaining data is same, but in case control study, we will be checking their past data, which is already been written, or we will be asking their past history. This is like follow up because we have seen patients without disease and over a period we will be asking questions. So analysis like here the main analysis is calculation of relative risk. So the same example uh, with disease and without disease. Analysis part what we are checking is incidence. Okay so the same table with the disease without disease and this is exposure and this is not exposure it is non exposure because the disease will be on x axis always and the exposure will be on y axis so uh, for 10000 people 45 developed food poison and the remaining 9955 did not develop whereas in non exposure group only 5 developed disease so the remaining were uh, not developing disease so the incidence rate we calculate this will go horizontally that is among the exposure rate okay the case control study exposure rate was calculated like vertically a by a plus b here it will be a by a plus c that is the presence of cases among the exposed group that is exposed to group is a plus c presence of cases that is 45 cases among 10,000 that is 4.5 and the number of cases or the incidence of cases or presence of cases among the non exposure group there it was among the cases and among the controls in case control study here it was among the exposed group and among the non exposed group the difference you need to uh, understand okay this is prospective that was retrospective in retrospective it was going among the cases and among the controls here it is going among the exposed group and among the non exposed group so 45 by 10,000 and 5 by 10,000 40 by 10,000 5 by 10,000 10, so you get 4.5 uh, is the incidence among exposed and 4.5 incidence among non exposed so the relative risk formula is incidence of disease among exposed that is horizontal and incidence of disease among non exposed so you get 4.5 divided by 0.5 is 9 so it implies that there is a 9 times risk of development of oral carcinoma in tobacco chewers compared to non chewers or 9 times risk of getting food poison among street food compared to home food or restaurant okay so the analysis is different but the meaning is same there we calculated the odds of exposure odds of exposure here we calculate incidence of disease among exposure and non exposed to group it is just opposite so the meaning is same it is measuring the strength of association between exposure and outcome or the causal factor and the disease so basically if relative risk is one then we can say that there is no association between this exposure and uh, outcome that is eating uh, street food or have, have getting the uh, developing uh, uh, food poison there is no association if it is more than one we can say that because of eating street food uh, the food poison has happened if it is two we can say that if it twice risk okay so greater the strength of association the greater uh, greater the relative risk greater the strength of association between the factor and the disease or the cause and effect and one example of another type of risk is attributable risk or contributable risk it is also known as risk difference calculated by like this incidence among exposed minus incidence among non exposed divided by incidence among exposed it will be presented in percentage so 4.5 minus 0.5 divided by 4.5 we get 88.9 percentage it says that how much is the attributable power of that suspected factor if 100 people are eating street food how many of them will develop food poison so the power of that particular factor before relative risk we were seeing compared to the 
non exposed group what is the risk of exposed group here we are saying the power of exposure for the risk difference or what is the attributable risk of a that particular causal factor so we can say that almost 89 people will develop food poison if he eat food from the street side or if 100 people will have smoking habit 89 people or 88.9 people will develop oral cancer so that is the attributable risk or risk difference and one last thing is population attributable risk so it is what is the population effect so it is like incidence of the death death in the total population this is the only different thing coming here so total incidence of disease so all the disease incidence we have to include here in total population minus incidence due to the non exposed so total population death minus population death happened due to uh, non exposed so what is the incidence in non exposed group divided by incidence in total population <coughs> so it also will give a percentage it provides an estimate that if the suspected factor is removed from the population how much percentage of people will be saved if suppose after calculating this we get 40 percentage that is if we remove the causal factor of remove the street food if we stop all the street food vendors we can save the total food poisoning disease by 40 percentage so if it is a smoking and lung cancer if we stop stopping if we stop uh, smoking habit or if we prevented smoking we can save 40 percentage of the total death so that is all about population attributable risk okay. the formula is different incidence of total population minus non exposed incidence divided by incidence of total population here it was incidence of exposed that exposed to become total population incidence of due to all the disease so ultimately we get the disease of people with only exposed so this is a little bit complicated uh, it gives a population attributable risk it is mainly helping in preventive programs if you are uh, doing a um, mass uh, program on tobacco uh, banning or tobacco counseling that program will have this much effect if we remove that particular factor from that population this much uh, incidence can be saved if a uh, population attributable risk is 70 percentage for the tobacco and lung cancer if we stop smoking we can save 70 percentage of the death due to uh, smoking from that population okay that's all about um, case control and coercity it was a lengthy session but uh, try to understand the concept both are different but one or same it has a same scenario one thing is going backward and one thing is going forward the risk estimation also it is just the uh, opposite one is measuring the exposure other is measuring the incidence among exposed group okay thank you